In this video, we're going to use a couple of uh, examples to reveal how to represent a 3D vector in a Cartesian coordinate system and how to find the magnitude and coordinate angles of a 3D vector and how to add vectors to find the resultant vector in 3D space. So the overall method is very similar to the method or steps we use in 2D problems. Once the individual vector are written in Cartesian form, it is easy to add or subtract them. And the process is essentially the same as when 2D vectors are added. So we take three steps, right? If you can recall from the previous video, so this is one example, if, I two, if we have two vectors, vector A and vector B, and we can write each vector in Cartesian form or the component form. Now we have three components in 3D, I hat, J hat, and K hat components, and the resultant vector or the sum of those two vectors will be the sum of the corresponding components. AX plus BX, that's the X component of the resultant, and AY plus BY, that's the Y component of the resultant, and AZ plus BZ, that's the last component of the resultant. Or if you need to find A subtract B, it will be similar to A sum B. The corresponding components of the resultant will just be the differences between the corresponding components. It's important to know that in most of the cases, the 3D vectors are not given in component format directly. So um, in a lot of cases, those vector information is given either as magnitude and the coordinate direction angles or magnitude and projection angles. So you are gonna use trigonometry to change the representation of the vector into the Cartesian form, like shown here. First, need to be, um, need to be represented in Cartesian form, and then to perform the addition or subtraction. Let's see one example. Two forces, F1 and F2, are applied to a hook. And we're looking for the resultant force in Cartesian vector form. In other words, we're looking for a force FR, which should equal to something I hat plus something J hat plus something K hat. So just as we stated earlier, to find the resu resultant force in Cartesian vector form, we need to write each force in Cartesian vector form and then add their corresponding components together. The result will be the resulting force in Cartesian vector form directly. So the plan would be we're going to be using geometry and trigonometry according based on this given diagram to write the two forces, two forces in Cartesian vector form and then add the corresponding components to get the resultant force in Cartesian vector form. First, let's resolve force F1. The imaginary, imaginary path method also works here for 3D vectors. First, let's locate the head and the tail. So this is the tail, which is the starting point of the force vector, and the head. So we are going to go from travel from the, uh, the tail of the vector to the head of the vector, again, only along three directions, x, y, and z directions. So looks like we're gonna travel, it's easier for us to just go along the y-axis and the distance here will be f1, y. And then we need to change direction to go to the head of the vector. So we're gonna then travel along the Z direction, which is parallel to the Z axis. And this is F, Y, Z, the Z component. So usually in this kind of problems, you will see the projection 
of the vector in a certain plane. So we see here the light blue triangle actually is the zy plane, which means the force vector f1 is within a plane. It's a 2D vector in this sense because it doesn't have any x component. All right, and keep in mind the x, y, z axes are perpendicular to each other. So x, uh, the y direction and z direction, and this angle is the 90 degree angle. And also pay attention to the uh, to the sign of each component. F1 y is pointing to the positive y direction, and F1 z is pointing to the positive z direction. So both components will be positive. And later, uh, or since this slope triangle is given, just like we did for the 2D problems, uh, we are going to use the slope triangle, the proportional uh, ratio of those two triangles to find the magnitude of F1y and F1z. So F1y, because it's uh, parallel to the 4, right? The size of its length of 4. So F1y should equal to 4 over 5 times F1, which is 500. And same idea, F1z will be equal to 3 over 5 times 500. And those are the components. Fx will be 0 since we're going to have three components, right? Don't forget to put down the i hat term. It's easier for us to add all the forces together at the end with all three components um, present in the expression. So F1 now in Cartesian vector form will, equal, will be equal to 0 i hat plus 400 j hat plus 300 k hat. To resolve F2, first we can uh, identify the components on the figure first. It will be easier for us to figure that out, to do the calculation later. We will apply the imaginary path method again. So here is uh, um, F2, right? The starting point of F2 at the origin. And here is the head of the F2. So we're going to travel from the origin to the head of F2. Again, only travel along x, y, and z direction. Looks like it's easier to just go along the x direction first. And uh, you can see uh, the two triangles are already given, right? One is in darker blue, one is in lighter blue. So those are the planes already given. So you just need to walk around the side or the size of each plane to find the components. So now this side, the side along the x-axis will be the F, F2x, the x component. And then looks like we need to change the directions, right? Again, keep in mind, you're only allowed to walk or travel along x, y, or z direction. So we'll travel along the y direction so this side, side is parallel to the y-axis, so it's along the y-direction or in the y-direction. Okay, it's a direction, okay, not a specific line. As long as it's parallel to a certain direction, that will be the same direction. So this will be F2y. Don't forget to leave the arrow there. So that's the direction you are traveling. Okay, this direction will indicate positive or negative component. And last step would be travel along the z direction. So going downwards. So that's F to z. And keep in mind if it's a negative value, put a mark there to remind you. Uh, to remind you that's an active component because from trigonometry all the values we saw will be positive length right magnitude uh, but those components scalar components do have a sign positive or negative 
All right. After we identify those components, we can look for the values of each component. Another very important information you need to identify is the 90 degree angle. So remember, x, y, z axes are perpendicular to each other. So the angle between x and y component, one is along the x direction, one is along the y direction. This angle should be 90 degree angle. So we have our right triangle here with a given 30 degree um, angle. And the next triangle, the vertical lighter blue triangle, the angle between F2 prime, here's the prime, um, and F2z is 90 degree. Because the z direction, z direction is perpendicular to the xy plane. Okay, this is the xy plane horizontal plane, so it's perpendicular to any line within that plane, which including um, F2 prime. So that's the 90 degree angle. All right, so after we figure those angles and triangles out, things will get easier. Um, so let me bring out this F2x, F2y, so this is F2x, and this is F2y, and this line is the F2 prime, and the angle between F2x and F2 prime is 30 degree, and we have a 90 degree angle here. And both x and y components are positive. And next, the vertical lighter blue triangle, we have F2 prime on top and then it's perpendicular to the F2z and this side is the F2 which has a given magnitude 800 pound force and the angle given is 45 degree. Okay, so we're starting, uh, we'll start from uh, This triangle I call it number one to solve F2 prime and F2 Z. Don't forget F2 Z has a negative sign in front of it. Use trigonometry to find the F2 Z magnitude and attach the negative sign in front of it. And F2 prime is a positive value. And next, well actually it doesn't matter positive or negative. Uh, because just keep in mind F2x, F2y, they both are positive. Okay, then we move on to triangle number two over here to further resolve this F2 prime force or vector to find F2x and F2y. And then finally we can put right force F2 in Cartesian vector form. With both force F1 and F2 resolved into Cartesian vector form, we then can add corresponding components together to have the resultant force written directly in Cartesian vector form. So 0 plus 489.9, this will give us the x component of the resultant force, and 400 plus 282.8, which will give us the y component of the resultant force, and 300 plus negative or minus 565.7 will give us negative 266, which will be the z component of the resultant force.